Hey guys, so this is the first video on lathe cam. Uh, to start this phase, you need to have a part modeled that you wish to manufacture. So here I have a couple parts that one might uh, that emulate some of the geometries people are trying to manufacture at the center. So here's one. Here's a very simple one. And here's an ID part that someone might try to manufacture. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a new file. So if this is already a part file, which is most likely to be, you're going to need a new file, which is going to be an assembly. So once you get this new file, save that as cam for st20. You can save it as whatever you like, but in this example, I'm going to use cam for st20. And I'm going to create a new component called stock. And the purpose of this new component is to model the shape of my stock. Now, for most of you who are using the lathe, this is going to be a plain cylinder. But if you have a second op or you're using more complex stock, you need to make sure that you model it accurately. So in this case, I'm going to stick with a plain cylinder and we're going to start on the XY plane and I'm going to go for a diameter and you can use variables to make your life easier. Diameter of one inch, height of seven inches and shape colorization. And effectively what I have right now is a parametric stock that can adapt to whichever stock I find. So if it happens to be 0.8, I can change that. If it happens to be 0.1, I can change that. If it's a little bit shorter, I can change that. If it's a bit longer, I can change that too. Now there's a couple of rules you guys need to keep in mind. The first thing is the length and uh, you really want to avoid absurdly long pieces of stock. If you are trying to make multiple pieces, there's a physical limit to how much the rod can stick out. And we're gonna learn some of these principles as we go along. So for now, we're gonna stick to this size and click OK. Now the next thing we're gonna need is, uh, it's gonna be helpful to make this stock translucent because the part sits inside of these stock items and I'm going to start importing my different parts. Now in your case you're going to just have a single part but in my case I'm going to import all three of these so we can study how we would do cam with different geometries. So let me get these in. So I'm going to activate my assembly and then I'm going to drag in this part and that can go there and then I'm going to drag in this part that can go there and I'm going to drag in this part and that can go there and the next thing I need to decide is how far in do I place this in my stock so if you have a perfect stock you could technically place it flush with the surface but most likely you're gonna have a socket here so it is advantageous to place it a little further below 0.1 is a safe generic value to start with. So we're going to stick to 0.1 in this tutorial, but this is something you could get assistance from a peer mentor to decide which value works for you. And 0.1 as well. And I'm going to take this one and bring it here. 0.1. So at any given time, you wouldn't really have multiple lathe parts in the same cam, but for the sake of tutorial, we're going to stick with uh, multiple of these. So we're going to start with a simple part. And we have our joints here. So the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need your fixture model. Now the ST20 is relatively straightforward. There is only one fixture and I'm going to show you how to get it. So you navigate to work holdings and stock. You go to your Royal Chuck, the five C Chuck, drag and drop this in and click okay. And there you have your Chuck. 
Now, it will have a link, a chain link, and we're gonna break this link. And it's very important that you do this. So do not forget to do this, make sure you do it. And now we're gonna to go to change parameters and what you're going to see is a bunch of useful new parameters that have just come in. So the first one is the diameter of Royal 5C. So I can change this, it can be one. And I can even try like absurd values like two and that should break the model. Yeah, but one. And if you scroll to the side, what you'll see is the acceptable diameter range is stated. So you really can't hold stock that is outside of this range. So keep that in mind. The next one controls this plane on the bottom. So if you see, if I set it to one, the plane goes further down. If I set it to two, it goes even further down. And if I set it to point one, it's right at the surface. This decides how far your stock is inside the collet and it is quite advantageous that you make your joints between your stock and this plane so we can quite easily parametrically adapt now in my case <coughs> i'm going to set the diameter to equal dia which is my parametric stock so if i change my stock dimensions it'll adapt accordingly so if i change it to 1.2 both of the models are going to adapt if i change it to 0.5 both the models are moving in sync so this makes life a little bit easier let's go back to one and i'm going to do a joint between this right here and this pink circle and click ok now at this point the part is sticking out too much so we're going to have a look and we're going to use a tool that is rather useful for uh, lathe work that's called section analysis so right here i select this plane and i click ok and this is useful and i'm going to turn that analysis off for a second because i see that this is moving around so i'm going to just join it to the origin of the assembly click ok and I'm gonna turn on my analysis again so I can have a look. So, first thing is we're gonna get this as deep inside as we can. Modification, change parameters. I'm gonna go for a stick in of five inches, seven inches, eight inches, and this might be close to where I might want to keep it. Nine seems too close. We'll have to cut off the part which will make us physically run into the fixture which is something we never want to do. So let's discuss some rules. The first rule that you need to be familiar with is how much you can stick things out. And this is not an absolute but this is a recommended. You should never have things sticking out and sticking out would be this distance to this distance which is two inches you should never have your stick out be more than three times diameter so this is a one inch stock a three inch stick out would be the absolute that is acceptable anything more and you're going to need specialized uh, fixturing and or specialized cutting strategies and we want to avoid that as much as possible so by being two times the diameter stick out this is right in the ballpark for what is acceptable you should not have anything more than three times diameter now the next thing is stick in so there's a physical limit to how much you can stick this in the chuck as well <coughs> The first limit is dependent on the diameter. So if you have a look here, it has this supported range, but only up to the inch size, one inch size, can actually slide in the collet. Any bigger than that, and the collet has a physical gap, and you can't really slide it in any further. So if you're dealing with stock that is slightly larger than an inch, you might want to check how deep it can get into the collet to decide what size of stock cuts you need to make. Now, if your stock can actually slide right into the collet, 
the physical limit that one should aspire for is eight times diameter. So starting here till here, there should be at most eight times diameter. Now this one's right at the limit because if we look here, we have set it to stick in eight times. So I'm going to just set a limit here less than eight times D. Now, again, you can technically do more stick in, but you're looking at specialized cutting strategies. To avoid that, if you have a long piece of stock, chop it up and try to keep under that eight times D restriction. <coughs> so with that, we have our fixturing done and we are going to look at the cam setup. So when you have this setup with our fixture, with the stock and with the part, and this is going to be a running theme. Pretty much every cam requires a fixture, which is provided from our assets library, requires a stock that is representative of what you're starting with. This can be obtained from either our parametric models in our asset library or be made by you. <coughs> and the part, the physical thing that you're trying to make, and this can be e most likely always is going to be something you design. So when you have these three things and they're joined together and assembled in an assembly, then you can move on to the manufacture phase. <coughs> now in the manufacture phase, we're going to do a new setup under turning new setup now if i can explicitly define turning and i'm going to select a machine so the machine i'm going to go with and this is what the tutorial is for is the st20 i'm going to select that make sure your operation is turning your spindle is the primary spindle the next thing it's going to want to know is this work coordinate system so we are going to go for a selected point and we're going to select this point right here and if you look carefully this point matches this top of this blue surface that's the point we want to select and the z axis should be pointing straight up if it's not you'll make a mistake here now this is the likely location you're going to be putting your WCS. There are certain cases, especially in second ops, that you might be putting your WCS on top here. If that is the case, your TA will indicate to you. And fortunately, we have a arrow pointing right where the WCS goes. So you should have no confusion about where to place it. Now the next value is called the safe distance. Now the safe distance really controls where uh, it is safe for the tool to move around fast. A good generic value is one inch away from the stock. The next thing we're going to do is select our model. So a lot of people again click here, try to avoid that. In our case, it's going to be specifically the simple part. Then the chuck is usually just a just a number that we uh, that is set in cam but in our case we actually have a fully modeled out chuck so we can just select from solid and select our royal 5c call it chuck it also has an offset which controls where the start of the chuck is but since we have a real model chuck we can just set that offset to zero and it brings the green line where our actual chuck is. So that makes it really easy. Now, when it comes to our stock, again, you could have easily just used one of the uh, uh, predefined cylinders, but that can be quite cumbersome and cause problems later. And we have a fully modeled so, uh, stock, so we can just select that. There we go. And we can see that the stock is that big. Now here comes a very important part. Make sure this 
<coughs> number is 2 and you can see that that it indicates number 2 so make sure this number is 2 there are rare instances where you'll be using number 1 and that usually again happens when you're doing second op and pick a number other than the generic one okay so that concludes our setup I'm gonna do this a couple more times because I have some different parts so this is going to be set up for simple and I'm gonna duplicate this and duplicate so here for the next one I'm going to do it for complex cancel and I'm going to rename this for ID and the only thing I'm going to change is the actual part selection so in this complex I'm going to select this part and in ID I'm going to select the ID part and with that our setup is complete I've done three setups because I'll be using it in the tutorial you'll only have one and hopefully you know now how to set up your CAD models and to create your first setup. Okay, see you guys on the next one.